Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Annie. And for this week's Mental Health Monday, I actually wanted to talk about the relationship between makeup and mental health. The way I came across this topic this week was actually because I heard that recently Selena Gomez, a very beloved old Disney Channel star, now a pop star, actress, all of those things, an icon in Hollywood essentially, she had come out with a beauty line called Rare Beauty and it has something to do with mental health. That obviously piqued my interest because I love makeup, it's something really fun for me and I clearly very much love topics on mental health, advocacy. So the first part of the video, we're gonna go through Selena Gomez's Rare Beauties website to see what they mean when they talk about, oh, this is a brand that is different. It's about mental health and it's more than just makeup. So we're gonna look into that and do our research and see what that really means. And the second part of this video, I wanna dive a little bit into the relationship between makeup and mental health. Now let's get straight into the video. So I'm gonna pull up Rare Beauty on my phone. You can see it, let's put it right here. And this is the front page. She looks beautiful. Looks like a typical makeup website. And here, what makes us rare? Together we're building a safe, welcoming space in beauty and beyond. Our story. Um, rare Beauty is breaking down unrealistic standards of perfection. Okay, that's nice. This is makeup made to feel good in without hiding what makes you unique. Because Rare Beauty is not about being someone else, but being who you are. I like that and okay so it's a lot about be who you are use makeup to maybe enhance what you have but not to hide who you are um, but selena gomez says being rare is about being comfortable with yourself i've stopped trying to be perfect i just want to be me that's a very good message i actually read through this website yesterday while doing the research and i really wanted to share with you this part of the website where it says our mission and also about the rare impact we are on a mission to help everyone celebrate their individuality by redefining what beautiful means. We want to promote self-acceptance and give people the tools they need to feel less alone in the world. Our vision is to create a safe, welcoming space in beauty and beyond that supports mental well-being across age, gender identity, sexual orientation, race, cultural backgrounds, physical or mental ability, and perspective. We believe in the beauty of imperfections. We nurture a caring, respectful community. We create meaningful connections and relationships. We champion authenticity and positivity. We lead with transparency to build trust. We believe there is power in being vulnerable. So, so far when I first read the mission, it all sounded really great. Like these are all wonderful words, wonderful phrases, but there was a part of me that was a little bit skeptical because I was thinking, this is honestly not the first time that I feel like I've seen some sort of a makeup or a beauty product launch where they're talking about individuality, loving yourself for who you are, that's what we stand for. So when I first read this page, I was like, okay, that's nice. You know, I wasn't really convinced. But then I did some more digging into their website and I came across this part of their website. So on under company, it says about us, rare impact store locator but we're gonna go into the rare impact and this they're going into more into their mission how I saw this was now that they have their mission statement these are kind of like their bullet points on what they're doing about you know pushing forward their mission it's not just a blanketed statement as a to sell their products this is the part of the website that made me really feel like oh they're actually committed to this mental health advocacy journey and this is what they're going to do so the Rare Impact website says, supporting the mental health of our community, employees, and partners is core to everything we do. By celebrating our uniqueness and supporting each other, we aim to reduce the stigma associated with talking about mental health and to reduce feelings of loneliness. Okay? Our goals, they even have goals. The Rare Impact Fund, what are they gonna do about it? They have a beautiful mission statement, they have, a beautiful, they have beautiful items, it seems. Our goals, the Rare Impact Fund. The goal of the Rare Impact Fund is to raise $100 million over the next 10 years to help address the gaps in mental health services for underserved communities. From the first Rare Beauty product sold onward, 1% of all sales, as well as funds raised from partners, will be dedicated to the Rare Impact Fund that aims to increase access to mental health resources. So it looks like they're putting their money where their mouth is. So every item that they sell, 1% and this part is a little more vague but as well as funds raised from partners so maybe that alludes to maybe future projects that the Rare Beauty brand might get into. Um, it is going to go into a specific fund set aside to increase access to mental health resources. 
We are cultivating partnerships with leading foundations, nonprofits, organizations, and companies to make a measurable global impact. So far, I was already starting to be convinced. I think a lot of the times companies can say a lot of things, you know, and it makes it sound really nice. It's a very, very pretty package wrapped in pretty bows, but then you wonder, like, what is the substance of that? Like, is that really gonna be followed through? And then this next part, which is the rare beauty mental health council is what really really surprised me about this brand and how seriously they're taking their um, stance when it comes to being a brand that's set apart from others and really really advocating for mental health. Rare Beauty has also created the Rare Beauty Mental Health Council composed of expert advisors from leading universities, organizations, and companies focused on mental health. The council will guide the company's strategy to ensure maximum impact. How I hear this is that they've set up this mental health council in order to keep the brand accountable. The really, really cool thing about this part about the Rare Beauty Mental Health Council is that the skeptic in all of us could think, okay, that sounds great. So you've set up a council. Who's on the council? Like, Is it so-and-so's uncle? Is it your manager who has no background in mental health and mental health advocacy? And they are, I feel like they're pretty transparent in their website where they tell you exactly who is on their council. So far, it seems like they have Dr. Mark Brackett of the Yale Center for Emotional Inter Intelligence and the author of the book Permission to Feel, Dr. Scott L. Rauch, MD, President and Psychiatrist-in-Chief for McLean Hospital, Dr. Jane Delgado of the National Alliance for Hispanic Health, Elise Fox, founder and CEO of Sad Girls Club, Katrina Gay, National Director, Strategic par Partner of NAMI, which is the National Association for Mental Health, of mental illness, I mean, Justin Tranter, singer, songwriter, and activist, Lindsay Peoples Wagner, editor in chief of Team Vogue, um, an author of The Happiness Project, someone who is vice president of merchandising of makeup at Sephora, and the global social impact representative at YouTube with more members to be announced. So it sounds like a very diverse council of mental health professionals and people on marketing and these people coming together in a way where I feel like the mental health professionals will provide the mental health information and the sensitivity and the delicacy that is needed to address this very, very important topic, which is mental health advocacy, not only in the US, but globally. And then these marketing, VP merchandising, editor of chief of Teen Vogue. It's interesting that it's Teen Vogue. It tells you a lot about maybe the um, consumers that Rare Beauty are trying to get in touch with, a lot of the younger girls, and I really like that because that tells me that they're very interested in reaching out to young girls, teenagers, um, that really need a lot of mental health support and Selena Gomez is someone that a lot of these young girls look up to So instead of just a pretty face and a well-known name and a beautiful voice and just Hollywood fame The fact that her face and her name and her brand is behind these mental health advisors this mental health council this rare beauty impact that the fact that she's so vocal, that this is important and that she cares, and even her message of, I'm tired of trying to be perfect, I just wanna be me, it's really great role modeling for younger kids. After talking about the Mental Health Council, they have a list of support and resources when it comes to getting mental health help and they say we know that rare beauty community that the rare beauty community is made up of vibrant and diverse individuals our aim is to build connection to inspire friendship and to reduce loneliness if you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health crisis there are resources available Understanding mental health and well-being is a lifelong journey. We have partnered with many of the leading organizations in the space to provide resources to the rare beauty community, and they have resources to NAMI, which I said was a national alliance on mental illness, um, the Trevor Project, SAG Girls Club. I love that they're trying to build this sort of community when it comes to this rare brand, and they're doing that by using this hashtag called hashtag we are rare. They're encouraging people on social media to use this hashtag to join the conversation and the community by putting a photo of themselves on the internet and they want to empower their community to challenge beauty norms by shaping positive conversations about self-acceptance and mental health. Our community is inclusive, welcoming, and connected. And they say, you are rare. Join the conversation, join the community, hashtag we are rare. Topics on mental illness and mental health and mental health advocacy, for those who are really going through it, um, whether you are the one experiencing severe mental illness, or even if you're an advocate to talk about mental illness, like myself, it can feel very lonely at times. And 
community is something that you exactly feel like doesn't really exist. I really think it's really, really wonderful the way that they made this website and it feels very thoughtful. It feels like there were mental health professionals who put in their input on the language to use to make sure it is inclusive, welcoming, and it connects young girls or boys or whoever wants to wear this makeup to other people. I kind of talked about this a little bit, but I think a lot of the times when beauty companies come out with makeup, there's a lot of slogans like, love yourself, we're on a mission to help with mental health, and then there's not really much that comes out of that. A lot of the times it can kind of feel like pandering. So. I was kind of a skeptic going into planning for this video being like, oh god, another makeup brand that's trying to pander to young girls and young kids and kind of not helping the movement in a way when there's so much potential. And I was so pleasantly surprised when I read through their mission statement and what they're going to do, their goals. And I think now it's a matter of let's see what happens. I think their foundation is laid out so perfectly. They have a council of really, really well esteemed mental health professionals and very, very smart people in marketing. And, and I really, really believe that if this council works together, they can have a really positive impact. I think I'm going to be watching this brand with just a lot of optimism and hope because they have have all the pieces. They have laid out a great foundation. They seem to have all the great pieces. They seem to have really, really beautiful products that are aesthetic, that catches your eyes. They sent it out to all of these powerful celebrities and now I'm hoping to see all the right pieces fall into place and for them to make a really amazing impact in the mental health community. Now, this is the second part of the video where I wanted to dive into some facts regarding the relationship between makeup and mental health. For today's video, I'm going to focus mostly on the positive aspects of wearing makeup and how makeup can help those who may be struggling with mental health. Number one, wearing makeup can help individuals feel a sense of self-control and empowerment. A lot of the times when people feel like their lives are out of control, where they're feeling a lot of symptoms of anxiety, or maybe they're feeling really, really depressed, where they can't get out of bed. As trivial as it may sound, makeup can be something that can help these people get through their day. Makeup is a way of self-expression, right? So the freedom of self-expression, today I wanna wear a pretty simple look, I wanna wear an extreme eyeliner, I wanna wear this lipstick. It's something that you choose to do, right? It's something you have control over. That can help people struggling with anxiety feel a little sense of control. And there are studies that have shown that this reality of being able to choose your products and put things onto yourself and express yourself however you want can really, really help with those struggling with anxiety. And I mentioned depression before. For people who experience symptoms of depression, a lot of the times, one thing that we may experience is it's hard for us to get out of bed, right? Like it's hard to feel motivated. And makeup can be something that can help people feel motivated. That is one thing you can check off on your list for the day. So this freedom of self-expression that you are allowed, that you can express yourself through your makeup can help people feel very, very empowered and in control. Number two, makeup can help people feel a sense of stability by establishing a routine. And having an established routine can help individuals who may be struggling with symptoms of PTSD or even chronic depression. Even with anxiety, having a routine can help those struggling with symptoms of anxiety feel a little less anxious because they have something that they know will be there. Like first thing I do, I brush my teeth, I'm going to do my makeup, I'm going to do it. No one can get in the way of that, that is my routine, that's my time. And whether it's making the bed or putting on makeup, as trivial as it may sound, for a lot of people struggling with these symptoms, it can really help you to get through the day the best you can. Number three, makeup can help individuals increase their confidence and sense of self-worth. I talked a little bit about the freedom of self-expression where makeup is something that's really not harming anyone else, right? It's your own thing, you put it on your own face. By being able to experiment, express yourself, today I want a red lip, today I want a black lip, today I want to do this with my face, it doesn't matter. No one should be saying anything to you, right? Right? This is your face and how you express yourself. This can really help individuals really experiment with their self-expression and it can also be the start of a journey on how young people and teenagers learn how to embrace their identity or even explore their identity. Who am I? Am I a person who wants to wear a lot of makeup every day or a little bit of makeup every day? Am I a person who is a little more bold or am I just content with a little bit of mascara but it makes me feel good for the day? And now this is a part of the video where I want to put a little bit of a disclaimer where it's difficult to ignore or it's impossible to ignore that we live in a society where there are extremely unrealistic 
beauty standards bombarded onto all of us through social media, through marketing, through TV, even through your interactions with your friends and family. There could be certain beauty standards or beauty norms that are perceived to be right or beautiful or the right way to wear makeup, the right way to be beautiful. And not only unrealistic beauty standards, there's digital retouching on Insta. Oh my god, Instagram face tuning is like a trend now. Celebrity influencer worship. There's a lot of toxic schemas. There's a lot of toxic narratives when it comes to beauty standards in society. And makeup plays a controversial part at times when we start discussing on the topic of positive body image because many times the message uh, for truly loving yourself is understanding what real beauty is and that real beauty comes from within. So where does that put makeup lovers? Just because I wear makeup, does that mean I don't love myself truly? I think it's important to discuss both sides of the spectrum on this conversation because I believe both sides are just as important and just as valid. There are countless wonderful stories online of how makeup and finding the beauty community online has helped people, has saved people lives because being able to express yourself, being able to feel some sort of stability and have some sort of routine through the way of makeup has helped people deal with their symptoms of mental health and get through their day to day to keep going instead of giving up. And like I said, of course, there's the other side where as a society, we could feel pressure to always appear as someone we are not because definitely layers of unrealistic beauty standards, maybe cultural norms that are put on us, and also maybe something deeper inside us that we might have to look into, maybe with a therapist. I just wanna end this video by sharing this exercise with you. Maybe something you could try when you're on your when you're by yourself at home or just in your head it doesn't matter imagine yourself fully naked in front of a mirror no makeup no clothes no earrings no embellishments just you just fully present in front of the mirror what are your immediate thoughts do you like what you see or do you start to immediately pick yourself apart? The journey to true self-love and finding what inner beauty really means for each of us individually it's a really really long journey and in order to start a journey, we need to know where to begin and what our foundation looks like, what our groundwork looks like. For some of us, we begin by completely denouncing makeup because we realize the foundation of us wearing makeup was because of a deep loathing of who we are and we feel better, we feel more us and authentic to who we are without makeup. I know Alicia Keys is a huge public figure who denounced makeup and she is just glowing. She is living her life and she is happy and that's what matters. For some of us, it's continuing to wear makeup and continuing to express ourselves however we want to with our lipstick shade, with our eyeliner shape, whatever. And it's about doing that while understanding and working on why we wear the makeup. Everyone has a different starting point. Everyone's journey looks different. Everyone's destination is going to look different. However, what's most important is that at the end, the end goal should always be to better our mental health and feel good, content, safe, authentic with ourselves at the end of the day. That's it for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really enjoyed putting this video together because I just felt obviously very passionate about this topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought about this video. Any thoughts, opinions on Selena Gomez's Rare Beauty launch or on this general topic. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, my name is Yanni. I make mental health and social work videos on Mondays and lifestyle and more chill calm videos on fridays so if you're interested in any of that please make sure to subscribe to my channel that would be really great if you could join my little corner of youtube and yeah that's it for this week's video i hope you're safe and doing well physically emotionally mentally i'm sending you all good vibes and strength and i'll see you in the next one bye